So today's video is ballistic pendulums and explanation. And I'm going to go through an explanation of the three steps that you need to solve any ballistic pendulum problem. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Subscribe, click the notifications bell, thumbs up for this video, comment for this video, and please don't forget to share. Okay, now, I said we're going to go through a problem for the ballistic pendulum, and I made some additional ballistic pendulum problems and some collision problems and some pendulum problems, which you can link to all of those in the upper right-hand corner. But this is the ballistic pendulum, and this is our pendulum, and we have a bullet which has a mass of 17 grams, and we are going to shoot that bullet into this ballistic pendulum. And that pendulum has a length of 1.25 meters and a mass of 1.8 kilograms. And when we do that, the bullet is going to lodge itself. It's going to get stuck inside that piece of wood, that block for the ballistic pendulum, and then is going to be deflected to a maximum angle of 38 degrees. A ballistic pendulum is a device that we can use to measure, to determine the velocity of the bullet just before it struck the ballistic pendulum. So that's what we use pendulum for, to determine the bullet velocity. So that's what we want to do. We want to determine the velocity of the bullet when it struck the pendulum. So we want that velocity. Now, as I said, we're going to go through three steps. We're going to use a little trigonometry. We're going to use a little conservation of momentum, a little conservation of energy. So the first step is to figure out what was the change in the height of the pendulum. So we have the pendulum at its equilibrium position, and it has its center of mass right there. We have the pendulum at its maximum deflection. It has its center of mass right there. And we want to know what is the difference in height from those two positions. Now, you might notice a little bit here that we just have the makings of a nice right triangle. So I can draw a line across like that. And here I have a right angle. Here I have a hypotenuse. Here I have the angle I know, 38 degrees. And I have the two sides, the opposite side and the adjacent side. Now, using trig, you might remember that the opposite side is L times the sine of theta. But what we really want to know is what about the adjacent side? That's the one we need, and that's L times the cosine of theta. Now, we can figure out the change in height because we know the length and we know the angle. So we know the whole length of this pendulum is 1.25 meters, and we can calculate the length of this side of this triangle as L times the cosine of theta, if we subtract those two, the total length, subtract out this partial length, which is the side, and then we will have the remaining part, and that is the height. So we can write down that the height is calculated as L, the total length, minus this adjacent side for our triangle, which is L cosine theta. Now we like to factor out the L, so we say the height is equal to L times 1 minus the cosine of theta. Now, we can plug the values in because we know the length is 1.25, we know the angle is 38 degrees, and then we come up with a change in the height for that pendulum of 0 0.265 meters. Okay, that's step one. We know the change in the height. Now, for step two, we're going to look at the pendulum from just before the bullet collided with the pendulum to just after the bullet collided with the pendulum and stuck in there before it starts to move. And to do that, we are going to use conservation of momentum because momentum is going to be conserved. We cannot use conservation of energy because the energy is not going to be conserved because some of the energy of the bullet will go into making the hole in the block. There'll be some heat generated, some deformation. So we cannot use conservation of energy, but we can use conservation of momentum. And momentum, as you know, is P. That's the symbol for momentum. We have the momentum before and the momentum afterwards. And before and after, we have the momentum of the bullet and the block. And then afterwards, we have the momentum of the bullet and the block. Small m is the mass of the bullet. This velocity is the velocity of the bullet. I want to point out quickly that this is the velocity for this problem, the velocity of the bullet that we're looking for overall. Now, this is the momentum before, and before the, the block, big M being the mass of the block, the, and the velocity of the block, the block was not moving before the collision. So this term is zero. So that means we can just make that term zero. And then on the left-hand side, we have just the mass of the block 
excuse me, the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet. On the right-hand side, we have the mass and the momentum afterwards. Well, after the collision, those two stick together and move together up to the equilibrium position, so V primed for the bullet and V primed for the block are going to be the same, so we can factor out V primed. We just have on the right-hand side the sum of the two masses times their velocity. Now, as I said, we're looking for this velocity, the velocity of the bullet. I'm going to divide both sides by m, and then you can see that the velocity of the bullet is equal to the sum of the masses divided by the mass of the bullet times their velocity after the collision. Now, you can leave it like this, but you'll often see this equation written like this because this is 1 plus. You have m divided by m is 1 plus the mass of the block divided by the mass of the bullet times their velocity after the collision. Now you might think, okay, now we can just plug the values in. We have the equation for the velocity of the bullet, but we don't know the velocity after the collision. We know the two masses. We were given those masses, but we don't know the velocity after the collision. So now we're going to go on to step three, and we're going to use conservation of energy to determine what was the velocity of those two objects after the collision, okay? And they have the same velocity we said. So conservation of energy is going to be the potential and the kinetic energy. And we know after the collision, but before it starts to move, then there's no potential energy. This pendulum has no potential energy, so this term is zero. And then we know after they swing up to their highest position, the greatest deflection, then the pendulum is going to stop there momentarily before it comes back down, and therefore we know after there's going to be no kinetic energy. So now we can simplify this to say that the kinetic energy at the bottom is going to be equal to the potential energy at the top. Now the kinetic energy you know is 1 half mv squared, and the potential energy, energy is just mgh. Now I want to point out that this m is actually the mass of the two objects together. So this mass is the sum of the two masses for the bullet and the block, just as this one is also the sum of the two masses from the bullet and the block, and those two are equal to each other, so we can cancel those out. And we're left with 1 half V prime squared is equal to GH. And I want to solve this equation for V prime. Now V prime is the velocity that we're looking for for the bullet pendulum system right after the collision that we can then plug into our equation for the velocity of the bullet, which we got from the previous step. Now, in order to solve for uh, V prime, we're going to multiply both sides by 2 and take the square root, and then we get V prime is equal to the square root of 2 times G times H. And remember, in step 1, we calculated H, which is the change in the height, and now we can just plug those values in that V prime is equal to the square root of 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration due to gravity times the change in the height, which we had was 0 0.265 meters. And then we come up with the velocity of the pendulum with the bullet right after the collision before it starts to move up or just as it starts to move up is 2.28 meters per second. This, I want to point out, is not the velocity of the bullet. This is not the actual velocity that we're looking for overall. But we're going to go back now to step two, and we have our equation which we derived in step two for the velocity of the bullet. It's equal to one plus uh, the ratio of the two masses times the velocity of the system after the collision, which we just calculated is 2.28. And we can plug those values in. It's 1 plus the mass of the pendulum, 1.8 kilograms, divided by the mass of the bullet. Now, this is 17 grams. We have to convert this into kilograms. It's 0 0.017 kilograms times the velocity of those two objects after the collision. And you get that that is a velocity of 242 meters per second. And we can convert that to feet per second because the velocity of the bullet, the muzzle velocity, is often given in feet per second. That's just about 800 feet per per second. Okay, there you go. We did all three steps. Step one, we got the change in the height of the pendulum using some trigonometry. Step two, we got an equation. We derived an equation for the velocity of the bullet using conservation of momentum. 
Step three, we determine the velocity of the bullet block system right after the collision using conservation of energy, and then we took that velocity and plugged it back into our equation from step two. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Please subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Click on the notifications bell so you don't miss anything. Uh, you should give me a thumbs up. Please leave me a comment. I appreciate all of your comments, what you think about the videos, and don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.